Still always popping. We are on kick, K-I-C-K dot com. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. This, if we do go live and you happen to miss it, this or anything good from the live will be. Don't forget we do got merch out. And don't forget, we do got the Patreon. This is an up-to-date list. You can pause it, maximize it, make it bigger, see what it looks like on now. Um, and we do got the Discord, man. Discord plays a big role on the kick because you can't leave links in the kick chat anymore. You got to throw them on Discord. Uh, let's get into this, though, man. All of that is in the link in the description below inside the link called Linktree. Click that link. All my socials, everything will pop up. Mm, this is Scar City Studios. I don't. Islington Double Murder, Birmingham Party Stabbing Street Adams News. Oh, you, Scar City. Uh, young, young boy and a young man were fatally stabbed last night in Elfland Road here in Islington. Islington. A third victim is in hospital with serious injuries, but are thankfully not thought to be life threatening. This is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I really appreciate you joining me today and these are some updates coming from London and also stories that broke two days ago. The first story in the headline of this episode is the double murder that occurred in North London on Alford Road on Thursday the 29th of June. Condolences to the family of the two victims and... Yeah, RIP, man, that's crazy. Double murder in, in London is tough. One of them has been named as 15-year-old Leonardo Reed from Islington. Police were called on Thursday to Alphorn Road to reports of a stabbing and officers responded with the paramedics and the London Ambulance Service. The 15-year-old was found with multiple wounds and despite the best efforts of emergency staff, he sadly was pronounced dead just after midnight. It was established that another victim, a 23-year-old man, had also suffered stab wounds and was taken to a West London hospital where he was pronounced dead later on that evening. What do y'all think is the reason behind this? You had a 23-year-old and a 15-year-old. Do you think the 15-year-old was mistaken identity or you think he was involved? Because, you know, the streets is the streets, no matter how you put it. All these civilians that be watching, they be like, oh, man, that's tough. But what was he doing? I No offense, RIP, a loss of life is a loss of life, especially when it's somebody that young. But, like... Evening. Police have informed the next of kin and they are being supported by specially trained police. A special post-mortem ex examination took place and both causes of death were determined to be stab wounds to the chest. A third victim, believed to be 28, was located at an address in North London and he suffered also a stab wound and was taken to a North London hospital where he remains in a non-life-threatening condition. Detectives from the Specialist Crime Command are leading the investigation, supported by officers from the North Command Unit. A 46-year-old man was arrested on Saturday the 1st of July on suspicion of murder and also attempted murder. He was taken to a police station but was subsequently released without any conditions or charges. De That's crazy. Detectives investigating the double murder have made an appeal for witnesses and Detective Jim Eastwood said we are the third day into the investigation and other inquiries are ongoing but they still want to hear from anybody that was on Alphorn Road on Thursday night. Two people have sadly lost their lives and they really need to know why and how this happened. Thank you to Dave Nathan for his coverage from the scene that shows forensic officers trawling the estate and a tent erected next to a car park. A bicycle is also in the middle of the crime scene and it is not known if this has anything to do with it. But it goes to show that when a crime scene is put up, there is nobody that can move it and anything that is inside it, including somebody's car that has nothing to do with it, will be kept by the police until they are happy that they have ruled it out. So I definitely keep you updated on that story and please pay respects in the comments below. Yeah, definitely RIP. But, you know, th those are the questions that be running through my mind when I be seeing these. Because I know what the streets is really like. You know what I'm saying? And I know that that's a youth. But at the same time, it's 10-year-olds off the porch in Chicago causing destruction and damage. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? So with that mindset, it's like, for me, it's like, what did he? what was he on? <laughs> Like, what was he doing? He could be doing nothing, but I'm still going to ask the question. You know what I'm saying? R.I.P. though. Respectfully. In some other news coming from London. 
Three teenagers have been charged with the murder of a 17-year-old boy called Victor Lee. This occurred on the Grand Union towpath at Scrubs Lane and it is believed the boy fell from the bridge after being stabbed. And three teenagers have now been charged with his murder and also robbery. The teenagers' ages are 14, 15 and 17. You see what I'm talking about? Now, I don't, these probably have, these two stories have no way to tie into each other. But th- you see where I'm coming from now though, right? 14, 15 and 17 did this to him 14 15 same age and younger as the last victim years old and they will not be named by the papers due to the fact of their ages they appeared at highbury magistrates court on monday the 3rd of july and were remanded in custody police were called at court to six on the 25th of june to report that a male was found in the scrubs lane canal at in the W10 area near with Ladbroke Grove and he was suffering stab wounds. Police and ambulance service attended and Victor Lee was pulled from the water and despite the best efforts of emergency services, he died at 6.09. A post-mortem examination on Wednesday the 28th of June gave the cause of death as stab wounds and his image has been released by the police now and his family and I just want to send my condolences to this young man. He's very young and you can see in the image just how young he was and so are the boys that have now been charged with his murder and this story I covered on the channel several days ago because I thought it was really important so I really want to hear what people have to say and we'll definitely keep you updated after the trial but we won't be able to speak about it again until that has been completed yeah I ain't really got nothing to say about that one And meanwhile, in the Orpington area, on Wednesday the 28th of July at 23.34pm in the evening, police were called to reports of a stabbing outside the hotel called the Walnuts. Police attended along with the London Ambulance Service and two men, both believed to be in their teens, were found with stab wounds. The two were taken to hospital and one man is in a critical condition and another man is believed to be in a stable condition. A crime scene remains in place and two girls, both aged 17, were arrested on suspicion of conspiracy to murder and are currently in police custody. The London Ambulance Service said they attended at 11.33pm to the Premier Inn in Orpington. They sent numerous resources to the scene and two ambulance crews, an advanced paramedic, a medic in a fast response. You know what's crazy in America? Like the thought of being punctured with a with an object, with a bladed article just never, never even crosses my mind outside. Never even... Like, I'd rather be shot at than stabbed, than attempt at stab any day. Because if somebody got the balls to try to walk up to you, get up on you, and try to do that, like, they're, 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 they're something wrong with them, first of all. It's always a different type of person to be doing that. Something wrong with them, and they, they, they're not going to stop. Like, <laughs> like, they own you. You better learn, you better be like that dude. What's it called? Cobra Kai? You better have some good knife defense skills. Car, an incident response officer and members of the tactical response unit. They also dispatched a trauma team with the London Air Ambulance Service. And this consisted of a paramedic, a doctor in a car, and they also treated two people at the scene. Because you like really don't even know when it's coming because they can come up to you straight poker face. And just pull that out of nowhere and just, you know, you know what I'm saying? Severe injuries, and one of them was major trauma. So thankfully, nobody has passed away in this situation, but it's also touch and go, so i definitely keep you updated if that situation changes. Thanks. But please, appreciate anybody that likes the videos and supports the channel as well. It really does help to get the news out there and to make sure that everybody's getting the news that they deserve. And in some other news here in Birmingham, we've also had several different incidents occurring and violence, and this first murder that occurred, the victim has been identified as Ashley Day. Police were called to a party Jamaican. At an apartment in the Digbeth area and it occurred on Bradford Street. Police have now charged a man with the murder and 18-year-old Gavia Badal has appeared in court. Inner City 101, never go to a house party. Never. I don't care where, where you at in the world, I will never attend somebody's house that they're throwing a party in. I don't care if it's in Hidden Hills, California. I'm not doing it unless you got security and you searching every single person through that door. Even even if that is iffy. Because that means I can't come in there. You know what I'm saying? 
yielding and you know what I'm saying? Brandishing, you know. With murder and possession of a bladed article. He was charged on Thursday and appeared in court on Friday. The tragedy unfolded at 6 a.m. on Thursday and the apartment was being used as a venue for the party. This was advertised on social media and police were appealing for anybody who attended that party to forward any videos, clips or pictures that they may have taken. Ashley's family have paid tribute to him today and said that he was a well-mannered young boy and very passionate about football and excelled at Newport Football Academy. He had a great if you value your life and you in the UK, don't go to no house parties. COVID is over. Go to the club. Go to the bar. I ain't, I ain't been to a house party since I was eight, 19. Once they start shooting in Chicago, it was done for. I remember in Chicago, I literally had to grab my friend and push his head down and a bullet flew right over him at a party. Like, nah. And we were still going to parties after that. Like, but then parties, obviously house parties just died off. We never stopped going during all those shootings, but looking back on it in hindsight, it's like, yo, what was I on? <laughs> but luckily, you know, I ran so y'all don't have to. You know what I'm saying? I walked so y'all don't have to. Don't go to no house parties. <laughs> Great love for music, and he had just been accepted for studies at the Science in Brutal University and was very excited to start later this year. He had a big brother and he was a protector to his mother, his younger brother, and also his family. Anyone who knew him will explain that he was a very joyous and happy person and always wanted the best for everybody. His smile was infectious and sense of humour was out of this world. They, they said in the statement that their hearts are bleeding and their son was a role model for so many people. Detective Inspector Jim Mahoney is leading the investigation and he said in a statement that we are supporting Ashley's family at this awful time and we have now charged a man with his murder but we believe that other people have other information about what occurred that evening. So rest in peace to Ashley Day and my condolences yeah, RIP Ashley. to his family and friends. As this episode is a roundup of news from across the country, this next story is from Scalmersdale. This is in Lancashire and it involves the murder of a 15 year old boy who has been described by his family as a gentle giant. He was stabbed to death in the street. His family said no amount of words will ever take his pain away. Lancashire police were called to Digmore Road in Scalmersdale at 9 pm on Thursday, June the 29th, to reports of the fatal fight. Are these real places? Digmore Road and Scalmersdale? Oh, that's that. Got to be a real place. Just hearing these names, I'm shocked. <laughs> Officers attended the scene and found 15-year-old Dylan Bragger from Scalmersdale with serious injuries and despite the best efforts of emergency services, he died at the scene. Dylan's devastated family have paid tribute to him and called him a gentle giant and a heart of gold. Our boy was loved by so many people and as a family we have no words to explain how we are feeling at this heartbreaking time. Dylan had such an infectious smile and would light up a room and cheer anyone's day up. He had big bear hugs and our boy didn't deserve to die like this. He was only 15 years old and he was already working and trying to be a car mechanic and he had his whole life ahead of him. We have a massive hole in our heart that will never heal and no amount of words will ever take it away. Detective Inspector Andrew Fellows of the major investigation team said, My thoughts remain with Dylan's family and friends at this time, and ultimately the devastation of his death. We now have arrested a male and aren't currently looking for anybody else in connection with his death. That being said, the investigation is still ongoing and nobody has been charged as of yet. So my condolences to Dylan's family and definitely shows that it's affecting everybody all over the country. Knife crime is not just an inner city problem. It can happen in a village. It can happen in more upper class areas and it can affect everybody. So this is something that I think is really important to highlight, no matter how traumatic and this can sometimes be, that people really do see the full picture from across the country. So really appreciate you joining me today for these updates. I'll be back again very were arrested. Yeah, uh, I ain't even gonna lie. I, I ain't even gonna lie, man. Coming from Chicago, hearing about all these deaths in the UK and things like that, you know, I be trying not to be insensitive. I be really trying, but it's like, even if, even if you're a real stepper 
even if you're involved, even if you a, a pimp, even if whatever walk of life you are coming from Chicago, you almost become insensitive to violence. Like, it, it almost don't even phase you the way it phase the rest of the world. You know what I'm saying? So don't take me as being insensitive. It's just like, damn, I'm used to it. You know what I'm saying? R.I.P. to everybody in this video, though. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notifications, and I'm gone.